Welcome to another video tutorial. In this video, this is essentially going to be part two of the custom main menu video. In the first video, part one, I showed how to make this menu here, the one you can see in front of you. Talked about uh, using a map as a background, how to disable the inbuilt main menu, and how to create your own menu using widgets. And then we made scripts for every single button uh, that basically makes all the buttons work, do their various different things. We even made a pause menu, so when you press escape, a uh, the game pauses and different menus pop up with different options. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to fix a few things that are... Um, there's going to be a few issues that we've got with the menu as we left it. So I'm going to show you what those issues are, and we're then going to fix those issues. We're also going to make some general improvements to the menu just to make it a little bit more efficient okay so starting off with the first problem which is actually with our pause menu we've made it so that if you press the escape key the game pauses and the menu pops up on the side now we're currently at the main menu we've got our main menu up on the screen we've got the logo of the game we've got the the options that we can pick on, that we can you know, click. If I press escape now, it actually brings up the pause menu as well as the main menu. And if we click resume game, it uh, hides our title because obviously the, the title is the same widget. So when the main, when the pause menu says hide the widget, the title widget, it's also hiding this menu's title widget. So we've also lost our um, our main title as well. Look at the fire in the background. If I press escape, it pauses the fire, brings back our menu, brings us, brings back our title. So we've got a bit of an issue in the fact that our pause button is working at the main menu and it probably shouldn't. So that's the first thing we're going to address and it's actually a very quick simple fix. So we'll just click quick game And there's another issue. It, it stayed, the main menu stayed on the screen as the game quit. So we've got a few issues there we need to address. So quite simply, all we need to do is go to our pause menu script. So we'll open this up. And we're just going to add two lines of code to this script. And it's going to make the whole thing work much better. So we're going to click edit. And at the very top, we're going to write if map.name is not equal to, and then in quotes, and if we go to our maps folder, the uh, name of the map where the menu shows up is menu. So we'll just type menu into there, and then we'll type then, and then we'll select all of the code we had before, and we'll press the tab key. That will just indent it slightly. And then underneath pause game, go back out of the indent and type end. So we're going to wrap the whole of our pause menu code inside a if. And the if, state, the if statement is basically saying if map.name and map.name is a uh, inbuilt uh, piece of information that you can access at any time. It will tell you the, the name of the map that you're currently in when this script is run. So when we press escape, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to find out what the map name is by getting map.name. And it's basically checking if that's not menu, then do all of this stuff. In other words, um, check for low data, show the title, show the pause menu, and hide the uh, load continue button, whatever, if there's no save games, and then pause the game. But it's not going to do any of that stuff if the map name is menu okay so if we apply and save that and return to the game so here we are at the main menu at the home screen if i now press escape nothing's happening nothing's coming up and that's because we are currently in a map called menu so the if statement in the pause menu script is basically saying don't bring up that don't do anything with this script while you're in a map called menu. If we click new game, 
it loads into a different map. This is called map one. If I press escape now, our pause menu works because we're not in the menu map. If I quit to title, I'm back at the menu map again, press escape again. Again, it doesn't work. So we fixed the fact that the pause menu was working in the main menu, which was messing things up. So again, we're just basically going to be going over the stuff we did in part one, just sort of improving it so it works a little bit better. But I just wanted to leave part one as just implementing a very basic main menu. But obviously there are going to be some things we need to tidy up. That was one of them. Okay. So let's uh, talk about the other thing we need to clean up. So what I've just done is I've just deleted the save game and the save data um, that we set up in our save and load buttons in the previous video. So we're back at this point now where we've got no continue or load game button. So if we click new game, for example, we've got a missing button here. And if we go into the game and we press escape, we've got a missing button here as well. So what I want to show next is improving this because I don't like the gap. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to make it so that the button that actually gets hidden when there's no save data is actually going to be the, but the bottom button, which in this case obviously doesn't make sense because it's a quick game, but we'll get to that in a second. We're going to hide the, the bottom button of every widget and we're essentially going to move everything up, up one. Okay, so let's quit the game and I'll show you what I mean. So let's start with the main menu. So we're going to go to the UI editor, widgets, main menu, and we need to find the ID of this button. So this is number four. So what I'm going to do is go to the script for main menu. Right. So we're going to hide element four. But what we're also going to do is I'm going to copy this a couple of times. is element two, which is the one we were hiding initially, which is the continue button. We're going to say dot text equals credits. So we're going to change what it's labeled as. Okay. And we're going to do the same with button three. So text equals and then there's our quit game button. So it's not actually going to be, it's not going to hide the quit game button. It, it essentially is hiding the quit game button, but we're just moving everything. So we're relabeling the other buttons that are going to remain visible. So this is the load button or the continue button, but it's going to be relabeled as credits. And then the credits button is going to be relabeled as quit. And then the quit button is going to be hidden. Okay. That just means there's not going to be a gap in the middle of our menu, okay? However, if there is a save game detected, then we want number four to be visible again. So we want to show the um, quit game button and we want to relabel these back again. So two dot text is going to equal continue again or continue game. And let me just check that. I want to make sure we relabel it. Continue. Okay. So back to the scripts. Just want to make sure I get it consistent. Because it's going to be important in a minute that we phrase it correctly. Um, and then we want to relabel button three back to credits. Okay, and apply and save. So if we reload the game now, there won't be a gap. Uh, what needs saving the UI editor for some reason? Okay, so everything's just shifted up. Because there's no save game, um, this button, which initially said continue, now says credits. This is the button that used to say credits, now says quit game, and the quit game button is not there because it's there's no save game. So that's the button that gets hidden. Okay. 
if I was to um, load the game and save, which we won't do just yet, we'll get the others working. But if I was to then have a save game, this will these will then um, this will be relabeled back to continue. This will be labeled back to credits, and in the quick game uh, button will show up again. Okay. So at the moment, these buttons are going to do the wrong thing. Okay, because we haven't changed the buttons, we've just changed the text. So this is still effectively the load game button. So the action when you click on it is still set currently to do the same thing as it was before. So all we've done is change the text of the button. We haven't changed what the button does. So although it's labeled as credits, it's still essentially the load game or continue game button. And this is still the credits button. So if I was to click quick game, it's actually just going to show me the credits. Okay. New game, however, is unchanged. So if I was to click that, we'd go into the game. Okay. Because I don't currently have a quick game, I'm going to uh, bring down the console and just type quick game. So uh, let's fix the pause menu. We need to do the exact same thing, but with the pause menu. So let's bring this up. So these two buttons are going to remain as they are, but this is the one that needs to be have the gap removed. So we want to hide ID free in this in this particular menu, and we want to shift everything up so we cover the gap. So in essence, we're going to hide button five. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to hide button five, so the quick gain button, and we're going to rename these two as if this button is missing. Okay. So to do that, save the widget, go to our pause menu script, and edit it. This is going to be element five, which is the, but the, the button at the bottom. That's going to be hidden. We then want to change buttons three and four. The text on those buttons. So three is going to become um, quit to menu. And four is going to be quit game. Okay. And then we'll copy those. And paste. And delete that line. So we'll show element five again. Three needs to go back to being load game. And then this one, quit to menu, apply and save. So again, if we run the game again, not only is there no gap in our main menu, but if we launch a game and press escape, now we've got no load game, right? Because there aren't any saves yet. So it, it's got rid of the gap. It's all just one nice tight menu. You wouldn't know a button was missing. That's the point. That's why I wanted to tighten it, neaten it up a bit. You don't want to sort of highlight that there's something missing necessarily. You just want want the button to appear when when it can, you know. So we've now got a bit of a problem. Okay, but the problem presents an opportunity. The problem we've got now is because we've relabeled these buttons, okay, quit game isn't actually going to quit the game. I'll demonstrate that in a second. It's actually the quit to menu button. So we're clicking and it's just going to turn us to the main menu. That is how it didn't quit the game, right? And if I click quit game, it's going to show you the credits. Because the buttons are basically their previous code, but just labeled differently. Okay. So we need to fix that. But we're going to have a bit of an uh, issue here because we're constantly renaming the buttons depending on if there's a save game or not. So this presents an opportunity to actually improve our main menu system. Because the way we've currently made it, and I made it like this deliberately in the first video, just so it was very basic, so it was very easy to follow. But what we've basically got is we've got scripts for every single button. Yeah, so there's one script per button, which means that our main menu has basically quadrupled our script count, okay, because we've got... A a separate script for the resume game button. We've got a separate script for the quit to title button. We've got two scripts for the quit game button, depending on which 
menu it is. We've got, you know, um, we've got uh, the script for show credits. We've got a script for saving. We've got a script for loading, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to streamline this so that there's only one script and we assign that one script to every single button. And it doesn't matter which button it is or which button you click on, it will do the right thing. Okay, how are we going to achieve that? I will show you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to game configuration and we're going to go to the global functions section and ignore all of that. We're going to create that. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a function. So type function and you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it button underscore action open and close parentheses and then within the parentheses you're going to type dollar and again you can call this variable whatever you want to call it but just so it fits i'm going to call it button text okay and then you're going to type the word begin and then underneath that right end semicolon okay so there's our function obviously it's not going to do anything yet so we need to go in between and press tab and then we're going to create an if statement that says if dollar button underscore text is equal to open and close speech marks new space game all in capitals. And the reason I'm doing it all in capitals is that's because that's how I've labeled my buttons in the UI editor. I'll show that in a second, but we'll continue for now. If button text equals new game, then and then tab. And then I'm just going to put an end for a moment and just put, if I can, some comments. And can I validate? Yes. So that will just allow me to pause for a moment, go to my UI editor. So you can see these are all in capitals. I basically want my function to have the same text in the if condition as the text that's on the buttons. So if my buttons are in capitals, so should your function have the same text okay capitalization and spelling absolutely matters in scripts okay so uh the other thing i want to do now is go to my new game script so let me just find that i'm just going to copy all of this go to my function and paste that into there In fact, I know, yeah, we'll, we'll do it this way. So, that's that. But instead of ending, what we're then going to do is else if dollar button underscore text equals, uh, let's do resume game. You can do these in any order, but I'm just going to go through them in this order. Um, we then need to quickly throw an end in and some comments just so I can validate close this a little bit sort of time consuming to go through uh, after the fact but um, once you know to do this you can just do this from the beginning and then you don't you just write all your scripts in the function as opposed to the scripts themselves so I'm literally just porting over um, in fact, what I might do, now you know that's what I'm doing, I might just do this off camera. I'm just going to basically go back and forth between each of the scripts and then I'll show you at the end what it looks like and walk you through it. Because it will take me a bit of time just to go back and forth like this. But I'm just going to be essentially taking all of the individual scripts and putting them inside the function here underneath their own else if. Okay, so I'll come back when I've done that. Okay, so I've just gone ahead off camera and put all of the um, scripts into this one. And what I've also done is deleted them all. So now essentially what we've done is we've streamlined our main menu to just three scripts at the moment. We've got the main menu script, which brings up the main menu. We've got the pause menu, which brings up the pause menu. And we've got our startup script that starts the, the, the actual game. There's no scripts to do with any of the buttons. They are all now inside this function. So this function, basically, let me just see if I can 
uh, expand. I'm not sure if you can make this any bigger. I don't think you can. Otherwise, I would try and expand it. But anyway, um, I'll go through it. So we've got function, button, action. And then inside the parentheses is dollar button text. So that's a local variable uh, part, uh, created as part of this function. Uh, button text, begin. And then we're basically checking if the button text is, e is equal to new game, then do all the new game stuff. So hide the title, hide the menu, fade out, reset the camera, and then execute the startup script. Otherwise, if the button text is resume game, then resume the game and hide the titles. Otherwise, if the button text is save game, then resume the game, hide the widgets, save the data, save the game, and then I've got a, uh, an OR here, else if the button text is continue or load game. So that, that caters for, uh, instead of having to do else if continue and then separately else if load game, I can do them both as the same thing because they're essentially the same, they're going to do the same thing. Um, so they can fall under the same if. So if it's continue or load game that comes back, then we want to resume the game. And because we're catering for both, I'm hiding all of the widgets and it doesn't matter if this one for example isn't open at the time because we're actually in the pause menu it won't do anything um it's not going to error or do anything like that it's just not going to hide because there's nothing to hide so you can have this um as a sort of catch-all it doesn't matter so we're hiding all three widgets fading out and then loading the game if the buttons uh text is credits then do the credits uh, script which is to hide the menu and show the credits. If the button text is quit to menu, then resume the game, then hide the two um, widgets related to the pause menu, fade out and then execute the script main menu again. So it uh, reloads back to the main menu. Otherwise, if it's quit game, then I resume game and hide all three widgets again, because again, you could be in the pause menu or you could be in the main menu. So We'll hide all of the widgets for that. And we'll also resume the game just in case you're in the pause menu. It doesn't matter if you're in the main menu. If you're not paused, resume game just won't. It will just resume resuming, if you know what I mean. It, it won't do anything. But if you're paused, it will then resume the game. And then fade out and quit the game. So does that make sense? I've just literally ported over all of the scripts that were individual into one big if statement inside a function. Okay, inside the global uh, game configuration, global functions, and it's called function button action. Okay, so we'll click OK. This, as I say, has allowed us to get rid of all of the scripts that would have held those pieces of code. So we streamlined the amount of scripts we need. However, we need to create one more script. So let me just quickly create a new script and we'll call this uh, menu underscore buttons. Okay. And this is just going to simply call our function. So this is button underscore action. Like so. But here's the sort of the magic that makes it all work. Instead of having to pass in, you know, new game or something like that and having to do it for every single button, what we can do instead is type self dot text. And what that will basically do is that will find self will basically be the button you click on and then dot text will grab the text of that button. Okay. So if we click the resume game button, self dot text will be resume game. If we click the quit game button, self dot text will say quit game. So this um, function here, this if dollar button text is new game, resume game, save game, this is going to be done automatically by this bit here because self will always be the button we click on irrespective of what it's currently labeled as and the dot text will grab the text of that button so if this button here for example doesn't currently say continue but it says credits instead because it says credits our function will do the credits Okay, does that make sense? Because we're grabbing the text of this button 
rather than what we've assigned to it, if that makes sense. Okay. So going back to our script, now we've done that, we can apply and save that. That's our single script called menu buttons. And all we simply do is we go to our main menu, click this button, run script menu buttons. Click this one, run script menu buttons. Menu buttons, you just apply the same script to every single button in both menus. Because irrespective of which menu it is, the text of the button will be taken into account. And because we're using self.text rather than uh, a specific widget reference, like widget element, etc., it doesn't matter which widget we're using either. It's always going to be, self.text is always going to be the button you click on, regardless of which widget that button is in. Okay? So we can just set this script onto every single button of every single menu. Okay. And with that done, we can save that, make sure the other one is saved. And if we quick play, we should now have a fully working menu system. So we've got a gap, or well, we've got no gap. That's the point. We've got a missing load or continue uh, button because we don't currently have a save game. If I click new game, it should detect the fact that this button is labeled as new game. So it should then run the code uh, related to that, which should hide the menu, fade out and run our startup script. And sure enough, there we are in Mac one, press escape. So here we are, we're missing a load game button because we don't have a load game. But if we click resume game, same thing again, even though the buttons have been moved around or, or technically these top ones haven't, but We've, we're now using a whole new system where if for this button to work, it needs to detect that this button is labeled as resume game. So it should do the resume games function, which is just to hide the menu and unpause the game, which it does. So if we walk across the bridge and stand here, we can press escape. We can click save game and it should detect that the button is labeled as save game. So it should run the save game commands and it has saved the game. But now there's a save game. So if we press escape now, there should be an extra button that suddenly appeared in the middle now, but without a gap. And there we go. We've now got this load game button, okay? Now, because we've shown that button, we've basically moved these buttons down, essentially. We've relabeled the buttons down here. So if we quit to menu, this should still quit to menu because it's detecting the text rather than the button we're actually clicking on, if that makes sense. So it fades out and we're back to the menu. The menu itself now has an extra button, which we can click continue. Because it's labeled as continue, it should load, which it does. We can load game and it does. We can quit to menu again. We can click credits. So basically the buttons are the same script, but it's just detecting the text on the button and that is governing what the button does. Okay. So we're not hard coding any of the buttons. We're just saying whatever the text is on the button, I want you to do this. Okay. And then we don't need to check quit. It would do the same thing. We've gone through pretty much all of the buttons. So there's our much more efficient menu system, not only because one function is doing it, but it also has cut down the amount of scripts we need, okay? I also want to fix the credits because we've got this issue at the moment. Hopefully this will be fixed at some point, but we've got an issue at the moment with credits where when you show the credits afterwards, none of the widgets work. So our menus don't work after that. So I'm just gonna make it so that the game automatically quits at the end of the credits. Now, how do you do that? Because by default, the credits will either return you to the main menu if you've got this option on, or it will prompt you, do you want to quit or restart? And if you click restart, unfortunately, you're going to then have the problem. So because we've got this issue at the moment with custom main menus, it's probably a good idea just to quit the game if somebody clicks uh, show credits at the end of it. 
So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a secondary script, which I'm going to call credits quit, something like that. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it credits quit. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type the code and then I'll explain why it's this code. So I'm going to type wait and I believe 16.2, we'll check that in a second, and then quit game. Okay, we don't need line three. It's just a two line script. Apply and save that. And then in our function, because this is now where all of our code is, in our global function for credits, just before we show the credits, we're going to execute script credits quit. Okay, so it's going to fire that script off and then show the credits. Okay, the reason we're doing it in that order is because once you show credits, that basically takes over. So we want to do everything else first and then show credits at the end. Okay, so what's What's this going to do? What's credits quit going to do? You'll notice it's got wait 16.2. If you go to the UI editor and go to credits, okay, if we scroll down on the properties, you can see that duration is set to 15 seconds. Okay, that's how you can obviously, if you want your credits to go slower, you can set it to 30. If you want them to go quicker, you can set them to 10 or 2 or whatever, you know, but they start by default at 15. This has just been my experience. It'd be interesting to see if it's the same on the Steam Deck, but certainly on my uh, PC when I was doing the tests, I've timed it so that the credits uh, end at exactly 1.2 seconds after the set time. So if the duration is 15, you want to add 1.2 seconds onto that time. So go back to our script. Let's do edit for a second. If the credits are set to last 15 seconds, then your wait needs to be 15 plus 1.2 seconds. That's why it's 16.2 in the parentheses, okay? We'll see if it's the same on the Steam Deck. It might be a bit quicker on the Steam Deck, you never know, but certainly that seems to be how it uh, works out. So this will make it so that the credits play fully. They get to the very top and go off screen and then it will quit the game at the end of that. So that's just a case of timing. You This time may vary when you try it out. So you just want to get that time right. So it plays all of the credits and then at the very end quits the game. And that will be run and execute simultaneously with the credits. So this script will start running and start waiting. And I think that's also why the 1.2 seconds is needed because this script will actually start a little bit sooner because this script is going to get executed just before the show credits start. And then while the show credits are playing, this script is waiting in the background for this amount of time and it will quit the game. So because you've got two scripts running simultaneously, this script has just as much priority as the uh, function does. So it's not going to wait for this credits to end. This script will kick off when uh, the time is up. Okay, so it will force quit the game at the end of 16.2 seconds, irrespective of where the credits currently are in their, in their playing, if that makes sense. So let's just give that a test. So if we now show credits, it should hopefully play all of them. So the whole, you should see the whole thing. And then just as thank you for your support goes off the top of the screen, it should then automatically quit. So you shouldn't see the quit and restart options on the screen. Oh, you did just for a second. So yeah, so the Steam Deck is slightly different timing to my PC, but not much. So it might be 16.1, it might be 16, you know, just have to sort of play around with it. I'll try 16 and just see what it is. I'm not going to play around too much, but you get the idea. You, you adjust the seconds of the wait to fit your credits. Okay. And again, you can change the speed of the credits in the duration section of the credits editor. Okay. So let's see what happens when this finishes playing. Yeah, so that's a little bit, you didn't see the options at all at that point. So 16.1 is is uh, is is perfect. And again, 
in the UI editor, in the credits section, duration is where you can change the time. And obviously, again, if you change that to something like 31, then your mileage may vary, but you should ideally add 1.1 or 1.2 seconds to your delay script. So this would be 32.1 or 32.2 if this is set to 31. Does that make sense? So that pretty much covers all the improvements that I wanted to cover in this video. So the rest, if we got time, is a bit of a bonus thing that I wanted to share. I was contemplating myself whether to do this or not. And then I got a comment on my first video on this topic, the main uh, basic main menu custom main menu system, asking if it was possible to have uh, menu backgrounds that change based on your game progression. And I was contemplating showing that myself. So because I had that comment, I will cover that very quickly. But I may not go into great detail on it because obviously the video has been going on, so I don't want to spend too long on it, but I will at least address it. So I've, Im I've imported a couple of maps from other projects that I can quickly demonstrate this with. I've gone ahead and gone into the map editor for both of the maps that I've imported. So this one, for example, is just a quick scene. It's the one from the ladders tutorial. I've put a tile underneath the map. I've, I've set this up exactly the same as the menu map. Okay. So you would want to do the same. If you had multiple maps uh, that you want to sort of change your menu, your, your main menu background for, make sure you've got them set up very similar to your other main menu map. So you might have a tile that's out of the way so that you can put the player on or underneath the map. And you want to create a custom camera position, a saved camera position. I've done that for all of the maps. I've given them the same name, menu BG because they're unique to every map. So I've just given them the same name on every single map. So let's go into the main menu script and I'll show you two things that you can do. So, uh, where is it? Main menu, there we go. So here we have our load map menu, okay? So this is the code that essentially, the rest of this is pretty much unique, okay? We, we do not need to touch anything below these um, anything below here, okay? The only thing we need to change is this line here, okay? So, what we can do is, first of all, let's do it so that every time you load the game, it's just random. It's a random background, okay? So to do that, you would do dollar $random map equals random and a number between one and three because there's three maps okay and then we'll say if dollar r and d map is equal to one then load map menu else if dollar r and d map equal to two then just going to copy this. Load map map two, and I've got the coordinates for it here. So that's the tile underneath the map for that particular map. Else, we'll just do an else for now. Load map overworld. Copy the coordinates for overworld. South. Not that it matters because you're not going to see the player. End. So that's just basically going to change the map that gets loaded depending on the result of a random number between one and three. Okay. Once that map's loaded, let's um, get rid of these now. Once that map's loaded, all of this is going to be the same. It's going to lock the camera. It's going to move the camera to menu BG. And because all of these maps have a position with that name, it doesn't matter that it's going to be relevant for that map. Um, and then it's going to show the title, show the menu, and all of this stuff is going to play out irrespective of the map that you're in because the map is just 
you know, a background. So if we apply and save that now and run our game, it should be random every single time we quit to menu, the menu uh, map. Let's have a look. So straight away, we've got a completely different background because normally it's the one at night looking at the house by the river. Let's just go into the game or click continue. Let's escape and quit to menu. Now we have a different background. So that should give you an idea of how to do it randomly. Okay, so you just have basically a random number between you know, however many maps you want to show. And then if it's this number, show load into this map. If it's this number, show it load into this map. Okay. And then move the camera to a position that's saved on every single map. Um, oh. Um, of course, what we do need to do, we then need to improve our pause menu script because now we're not in a map with the name menu. This is now sort of broken again. So let's... um fix that. So in our pause menu script, let's just quickly go back to that. You would need to fix this code so that this is if map.name is not equal to menu or map.name not equal to map2. All the maps that you're going to use as backgrounds for your main menu, you'll need to make sure your pause menu is not able to come up in those maps. Does that make sense? Now that should stop that happening. When you're checking for if map.name is not menu or map.name is not map2 or map.name is not overworld, it didn't like that. For some reason it doesn't like um, multiple map.name checks in the same line. So in other words, doing if map.name not equal this or map.name. It just didn't like that. The moment you had more than one, it, even the first one, which used to work, was not working anymore. So the way I do it now is I create a local variable called bad maps, or you can call it whatever you want, but it's just basically maps that shouldn't have the pause menu appear, um, equals array. And then I've just put in there the names of the maps that shouldn't have the menu pop up. So in this case, menu, map to an overworld and then the code is if dollar bad maps does not contain map.name so if the map that you're in if the name of it is not something that's inside this array then you can do all of this stuff if it is a name that's in this array then it shouldn't uh, show the menu so that now works so if you're wondering why uh, at the very end of the, this video and you're following it along why is the um, menu not being hidden when you press escape, it's because my initial suggestion didn't actually work until I tested it. So just want to quickly clarify, this is how you actually do it. Create an array, put in the, in the array all the maps that shouldn't show a menu, and then check if this array does not contain the current map name, then you can do all of your pause menu stuff. Now let's talk about how do you do it if you want it based on progression. Well, the best thing to do I'm probably not going to show this because it would mean setting all these things up. So I'll walk you through it. So let's say, for example, you've uh, got to a particular point in your campaign or game or whatever, where you're in a particular map that's, I don't know, halfway through the game or something like that. What it should then do is save data, create a data file, just like we do with save games, and write into there... Um, the map name. So let's say we've just loaded into a map called Overworld and save it as, I don't know, game progress or something like that. I don't know. You can call it whatever you want, right? And apply and save that. And then obviously I'm just putting it in the pause menu. It's not where you would put it, but I'm just typing it out just so you can see that you would put this code in at a point of, time, point of time in your game where you would either save the game or um, load into a particular map where you want that progress to be saved. So as soon as you've loaded that map, maybe in the post-load event or 
yeah, that's probably the best place to put it, actually. Post load of that particular map, you would then save data, the name of the map into game pro into a data file called whatever you want. And then in your main menu code, so let's load this up again. Instead of doing it via random, you would load data, just like we're doing here. So check saves. You would do, um, I don't know, check progress or something check progress equals load data and then whatever you called it so progression called it something like that i can't remember at the moment i'll look it up but you load that data into your check prog variable let me just go back to that script for a second what did i call it game progress so that's what you would type so you'd load data game progress okay and then you would check if dollar check prog equals or actually what you could do thinking about it because you're storing the map name in that data if that's the route you choose to go down then you can just load map dollar check progression or was it the name of that variable and then um, you probably want to um, store the coordinate as well um, or you could make sure that the coordinate is the same on all maps okay so then that way you can just hard code a coordinate in here like zero zero oops zero zero and then minus 32 or something if it's always underneath the map yeah you know? so just put that put a tile always at that position in every map and then always facing south because you're not going to see the player anyway okay so then that way basically if you ignore all of this that's how you would do it if you wanted it based on progression so to go over it again now i've put it in place uh go back to the previous script so as i say what you would do is in your post load of a map so just here post load script let's say this is a map where you want to to have this because the players now reach this particular map you want the background of your main menu to show this map or or a or a version of this map that you've set for the main menu so what you could do is post load script and have a script in here where the code is to simply save data, name of the map and call it something. And then in your main menu script, as well as checking for load, uh, if you've got any saves data, but you can also now load in that data, the game progress file and load that map. And obviously what you'd want to do just to be super safe is if you haven't obviously played any of the game yet if uh dollar check progress is null like there isn't any um text in there then obviously load map isn't going to work because there's no name to load so then you'll want to load the default main menu so in this case i type load map menu you know i have it as it was before and then i and then do else load map check yeah so i do menu and i fill in the coordinates else load map and then use the data that's in the file okay that way it just you know make sure that there's something in that file before trying to load the map otherwise just load the main normal beginning main menu does that make sense so that's how to do it via progression it's also possible as well to use multiple camera positions as well. So if you didn't want to change the map, but you just wanted to change position, you could do that. So um, the way you would do that is let's just load a map quickly. Let's load my menu map. So as I say, I've got one called menu BG, but I could create another one, let's say overhead. And let's just click this button and I'll call it menu BG2. Okay, so I've now got two camera positions and I want the game to either choose between this one 
or this one, either randomly or based on progression, then instead of loading two maps, you would load the same map. So you'd always load, in this case, menu. But in your script, what you would do is you'd write into your data file. Let's do it via the um, other script. Let's just quickly load pause menu for a second. Instead of saving the name of the map into here, you would save the name of the specific camera position that you want to use. And then in your main menu script, instead of load map check progression that you load in, you would move camera to check progression, right? So you would load move camera to dollar check, and it would then be that camera's position. Does that make sense? So as I say, I didn't want to sort of go into great detail showing these because it would take me a bit of time to set them all up, but I did at least want to address it for those that are curious if it's possible. Yes, it is. And this is sort of how you would go about doing it. If you would like me to actually cover this and show it and actually put it step by step into place, then I can definitely do that as a topic all and of its own at a later date. You know, message me, let me know if that's what you'd like me to do. But for now, that will um, bring us to the end of this video on improving the menu system and just making it work a bit more efficiently, fixing some of the outstanding issues that we would have had with part one. I hope it's been interesting and useful, and I hope that it made sense. If you've got any questions on it, please, again, always reach out on the Discord. I'm happy to uh, answer any questions you have on this topic. I will, of course, as always, include the zip file of this project. I'm probably not going to include all the maps. I may, I, I may actually, as soon as they're here, but mainly I just want to upload what we've done in the, mo in the bulk of this video, which is just improving the scripts. But um, as I say, I will upload this project as well. So if you want to play around with the scripts and the function and see how it's all working, then you can obviously feel free to do so. But that will bring us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more tutorials.